Hello, uh, we're here again for another three for one for this week uh, here in the Fill the House Library again. Uh, and this time I'm standing over by the AV uh, bookshelf because we're going to actually be going into the movies that we had talked about we were going to possibly do. Now with a movie that's coming up in a little bit here in the future, uh, I thought this one would be appropriate. And so we're going to delve into one of my personal uh, favorite franchises. And that should be pretty obvious from how I'm looking here. I've got my Spider-Man shirt on. I've got my Spider-Man bobblehead. I have my Spider-Man book. I've got my even bigger Spider-Man book. And I'm wearing Spider-Man underwear, but I won't show you any of that. Uh, but I do admit that I do own it. Anyway, uh, basically we're going to be talking about the Spider-Man trilogy, the I guess what you would call the original one that came out around 2002 is when the first one came out and uh, just something obviously that should be up front you know and apparent at this point is that I really love Spider-Man uh, I have a lot of stuff connected with Spider-Man and it was definitely something I was looking forward to though admittedly I did not actually uh, watch the first Spider-Man in theaters at the time I was still a college student I was trying to save every penny and I was under the delusion that the 1050 would actually matter. So I held on to it and actually watched it on video later, but then that I had to watch the other ones in theater whenever they eventually ended up coming out. So it's actually rare for me to have seen movies in the theater. If you know me, you know that. And uh, that should tell you, again, just one of the levels of passion that I had for it. So we're going to be looking to apply our three questions that we apply to every trilogy to it. Uh, but first, let's give a little recap. Obviously, probably everybody who saw this saw Spider-Man at some point. Um, pretty much everybody went to see him. It was really, in a lot of ways, the heyday of Marvel. And um, that's something I'm going to touch on later. Uh, we'll see if I have time to get to it in this video or not. Uh, but basically, followed the story of Spider-Man through his origin story up and through several of the main iconic Spider-Man villains. Uh, interestingly enough, there was supposed to be at least four Spider-Man movies, which almost would have circumvented this whole venue, wouldn't have even been in it. But with the, to a degree, lack of popularity of the third movie um, on a mass level, Marvel decided to move on to other projects which were giving them more money, i.e. Wolverine. Um, and I could drag, all, drag out all my Wolverine stuff and we could look at that too, but that's for another time. Uh, basically, how we want to approach this is, like I said, with my three-point questions, so we'll dive into the first one, which is, which one is the best one? I don't think you're going to have a huge amount of debate on that specific question. Uh, as a trilogy, the Spider-Man series actually works really well. Uh, the first movie had a big challenge. It was telling the origin story of Spider-Man, who I would go on record to say probably actually has the single most well-known superhero origin story, with the possible exception of Batman. Uh, that would be the only other one that I could think would even come close. Uh, maybe Superman at this point, but that's just because Man of Steel is not that old, and everybody went and saw that. But at the time, in turn of this century, there was, uh, Spider-Man was, origin story was probably one of the most well-known. Like I said, possibly Batman. Uh, so you had, a, you had a, a real challenge, I think, with that movie of trying to make something, a movie about something that everybody knew. Now, what Spider-Man had going for it was at that point, that first movie was really kind of that first, it wasn't the first, but it was one of the first big Marvel hits that really succeeded. I mean, you had... The X-Men as well was going on, but this was really, I think, one of those ones that actually were more, was more mass appeal. Everybody knows who Spider-Man is. Not everybody really follows the X-Men. Uh, you know, you're, you're kind of a nerd if you know the X-Men. You're not really a nerd if you know Spider-Man, even, even information like his backstory. Um, so the first one had that problem, but it really met it head on and it met it well. I think you got lots of good performances from everybody. And the script did what it needed to do. It maintained focus, and it told a story with a really good message, and it tied that message into the story. 
Now, obviously, after saying all that, you might think, oh, so Peter's favorite movie from the Spider-Man trilogy is obviously the first one. But that's not really the case. I actually think the second movie is a stronger movie. Uh, it took, it did what a second movie in a trilogy needs to do. It took the themes of the first one and it made them a little bit harder. It raised the stakes. It really pushed forward with on every aspect. Uh, it took Spider-Man's struggles, Peter Parker's struggles, that you saw in the first movie, and it made them even darker as he's moving out, he's living on his own, he's really struggling with how can I do both of these things, and it doesn't present an easy answer. It doesn't give an easy Spider-Man can be Peter Parker and Spider-Man at the same time, and it's all just going to be fine and work out if he just applies with enough heart and, and tries to struggle through. No, it's still going to be a problem. Um, it takes the traumatic relationship and really pushes it forward even, even harder and, and makes that, you know, that stress come through even harder on it. And it takes even the concept of the tragic hero from the first one, where Norman Osborn, you know, he was the villain, but on one level he was relatable and he was likable. It took that and pushed that even further with a villain who almost didn't even have control of the circumstances he was in. Uh, and so that really is the one that I think is the strongest. It, it did what a good second movie needs to do, and it actually did what a good standalone movie needs to do, which is present the themes that it was trying to get across of responsibility, of balancing when doing the right thing and the easy thing aren't the same, and just taking those and really solidifying and pushing it further. And again, like I said, I think it, it takes those themes and develops them well going from the first movie into the second. And again, and I'm bringing this up because this is going to be something I'll touch on later, it kept a tight focus. Uh, it gave you a story. The story got the point across. The story didn't deviate a whole lot from the plot. Now, you obviously had scenes like where he loses his power for a little bit and then magically heals it with mind over matter. Probably should have been explained better in the movie, but uh, when you have little deviations like that, but they added to the character and they added to that tension and that drama. So everything was coming back to a single focus point. So really, I'm going to say, on a quick easy answer to the first question, which one was the best? That's going to be the second one. Now, the second question I generally ask is, which one adds the most to the series? Well, as stated, I think the first movie did a lot for the series. It really set up and it pushed forward uh, a, a really rich, well-crafted Spider-Man mythos. And the second one did a great job at developing that. Um, so when I go for which one does the most for the series, though, I'm probably going to say the second, because Spider-Man 2 not only, like I said, improved on the themes from the first one, but it showed that you could make multiple movies about this character, and that Spider-Man had the depth of character, and the actors involved had the depth of quality, and the screenwriting involved had the depth of quality, to push that story to the next level and to keep it going. Um, it seems redundant to say it, or but you wouldn't have had a Spider-Man 2 if you didn't have a uh, Spider-Man 3 if you didn't have a Spider-Man 2. But I mean that in a very real sense that that movie did what it needed to do to be larger than life and to actually sell people on a third movie. The way the third one did well commercially, but it didn't sell people on a fourth movie. Um, but anyway, that should also imply my normal little caveat that I throw in after those two is which one is the weakest, is the third movie. But it's not really for, I think, the reasons that a lot of people would necessarily say. Um, there's a lot of the sillier stuff in the movie that I actually like. I don't mind that there's a dance scene in the middle of it, you know, at a, that Spider-Man goes emo. It's kind of funny. You know, I, I'm okay with that. And um, I actually felt like it was taking some risk and doing some stuff with Parker to try and make what would have otherwise been a pretty convoluted storyline of Venom and try to just make it a quick, easy storyline that you could trot out there. The problem that it really had, and this is a problem that has plagued Marvel to a degree since then, is lack of focus. The movie tried to shove too much into it. And it wasn't just characters. I mean, they weren't just throwing characters on the screen. They were trying to throw us way too many convoluted storylines that each needed a much longer amount of screen time than you were able to give them in a single movie. Um, and that's where that third movie started to break down. And like I was saying, I was going to 
kind of launch from that into a little bit of a broader statement, which is um, there's been, I have heard some criticism, if that word's appropriate to use, uh, about how Marvel is approaching how they're making movies now, where each one is almost episodic to a degree. But the thing is, I think what Marvel realized after Spider-Man 3, and particularly as they got into Iron Man and started making Iron Man movies, is that they needed to actually make movies the same way they made comic books, with these larger mythoses that wound into each other and gave you a more developed universe as a whole with no one movie that actually has to spend much time developing that universe. Um, this is what also, to a degree, the DC comic movies have missed the boat on. Um, they're still doing what Marvel was doing in that kind of dead zone period they had in between Spider-Man 2 and um, when they started picking up with those, with the whole Avengers universe they started crafting. Um, and DC is not doing a good job of digging themselves out of that hole at this point, but that's a whole nother discussion for a whole nother time. Uh, it could be because as a corporation they seem dedicated to firing and alienating every talented person in the graphic novel industry. But, uh, like I said, that's a different story for a different time. We're talking about Spider-Man. And we've talked about how the best movie, I think, is the second. I also think the second adds the most to the series. So the question is, does the second movie, as the best movie, benefit from being in a trilogy? Or is it something that would maybe be better as a standalone movie? I think it's something that does actually benefit from being in a trilogy. It benefits from having a movie in front of it, and it benefits from having a movie after it, even if that movie that came after it is not necessarily that good. Um, but it's okay. It's not a great movie. Uh, and I think the reason is, is Spider-Man is a mythos, and it's a, it's a built-up uh, thing that requires a backstory. It requires where you're at, and it requires a, at least a concept that you have more that's coming, that you're moving forward to. Um, and so, being part of a trilogy, I think, added that second movie some weight that was there, that was, went beyond even the weight that was in the movie. Um, obviously, the third movie started to drop the ball on some of those really important themes that were going throughout it. They tried to do too much with... T they tried to take too many of the themes from the second movie to the next level. Like I said, I like the movies to go up a notch to kick everything up to the next level. The third movie didn't do that, um, which is why you never saw Spider-Man 4. And I think the knowledge that most people had when they saw that movie was that that was going to be the case. And that took away some of that gravitas that was in the second movie. Um, and so that's pretty much the answer to the three questions right there. And probably I didn't bring a clock to look at the time, but I'm probably hitting near my self-imposed limit. So we will catch you guys next time on the next 3 to 1.